Hello listen family, how are you? Merry Christmas, the festive season is finally here. Do enjoy and have lots and lots of fun. So today we're talking about something interesting, but first I have a question for you. If I told you today that I have, um, when I was going for my run, I've discovered some really nice water spot and I'll take, I would like to take you for a picnic, would you like to come along with me? Oh, okay, I know many people would say yes. So when you're packing your picnic basket, what would you pack in your picnic basket? I'm sure you'd pack like a, a mat for us to sit on or maybe some shawl, some food, maybe some wine, some fruit, and especially some water, water to clean our hands, water to drink, and water to maybe clean after ourselves, like clean the dishes once we're done. But the question is, I told you that I found some nice water spots. Why would you feel the need to carry water? You'll also answer me and tell me that you carry water because, you know, you cannot trust the water sources anymore. On that account, it's really, really sad. So today we're talking about forming a BBI between us as humans and Mother Nature. So where do we start in this BBI? We need to know the elements of Mother Nature. And the elements of Mother Nature are water, wood, earth, ether, fire, metal, and um there's seven i can't remember the seventh one but i think i can remember six of them yeah and i uh, and what and air <laughs> i don't know whatever it is uh when i'm editing the video i'll put it in but mother nature has seven elements in the classic system which used to be four elements which used to be water wood air and earth but time has gone by and things have been revised and now there's seven elements so we're going to have a seven part series where we are going to be talking about this BBI between us and Mother Nature. And we're going to be talking about each element in this BBI, what is affecting the element at the moment, how it can be changed and how it can be made to be in our favor, favor of us as humans and in the favor of Mother Nature. Because at the end of the day, we must acknowledge the fact that Mother Nature has been here for like 5 billion years, which is 22,000 times, uh, 22, times more than the human race. Mother Nature doesn't need us, but we definitely need Mother Nature. If we do not take care of Mother Nature, what she will do is that she will terminate us and show us that truly this is her world and she will evolve. So today we are going to be talking about water as our first element of Mother Nature. What about what are we going to be talking? Uh, what are we going to be talking about water? We're going to be talking about what water is. One, water is associated with winter. Water is life because seventy percent of the earth is water cover, and water is the human body because seventy percent of the human body, interestingly enough, is made of water. At the same time, water is associated with cold. At a psychological point of view, water is associated with fear and death. Because these two things tend to say, okay, when you're feeling afraid, you say you you felt a, a cold, <laughs> a cold something run down your spine. I remember those are composition days, but that is fear and death. When people die, your body turns cold. So people associate death with water and the aspect of water, coldness of water. So now that we know that this is these are some of the associations of water, we need to know that. We as human beings, especially on the account that water forms 70% of the human body, it's important to know that in the human body, water has a major role of, in uh, water's major role is found in our kidneys and in our bladders. This hence shows the water is needed in our metabolism and in our reproductive system. Interestingly, water does not stop at that point because water is found within our cells, surrounding our cells and in our blood. We find that also water comes in handy in our immune system. I guess that's why they tell you when you have a cold, take a lot of fluids. You know what happens with the water in, in our immune system is that water is what helps to repair. It's what helps to lubricate and it's what helps to protect our bodies, our immune system. So do you see the relevance of water just in the human body? Thinking about water from that perspective, it shows us that the fact that we can all say that our water sources need revision, major revision, that today if I took you to a river, any river, nobody would be comfortable to drink water. If you went somewhere like on a safari and you ran out of water and there's a water body there, it's easy for us not to die of dehydration because you're looking at the water and you're like, no, this is... 
not the water that I'm going to take because no, I'd rather just die. So let's talk about the first thing that's water pollution. So we're going to talk about water pollution. So what is water pollution? Water pollution is basically the contamination of water by mainly human activities. Nature can also contaminate water through activities like volcanoes, but those hardly happen. But human activities are the major causes of water pollution. What human activities are we talking about? We can talk about deforestation. Taking us back to our initiative of one tree per person, for 47 million trees in Kenya and to reach our 10% tree cover. So deforestation and water pollution, how are these two related to each other? Deforestation and water pollution come in uh, as uh, associated in this way. So when we cut down trees, the soil, the roots of the trees are what help to keep the soil compact. So when the roots of the trees are no longer there, the soil particles are loose and when they are loose they become prone to soil erosion and with soil erosion the soil finds its way into our river sources into our water sources and when they swell in our water sources this is what hence makes uh this brings about nutrients into the water and this also brings about stuff like um ammonia ammonia ions and um also bacteria seeps into the water through the soil and if this soil is coming from a place like an agricultural place, the pesticides that are used in these agricultural centers, like for us as farming, if you're using chemicals as or fertilizers and all these, these also find themselves into the water sources, mainly through the soil. So you see how deforestation really, really affects the soil? That deforestation causes a major impact on our water bodies. So what is our, our, what is our responsibility? Plant a tree, each person, one tree per person, 47 million trees in Kenya, 10% tree cover, a balanced ecosystem, no swell erosion, and one step towards making our water more sanitized. So what else usually affects and pollutes our water? Sewage. Sewage. If sewage is allowed to get to our water sources without being treated, it's another major hazard. Another thing that affects our water and pollutes it is chemical waste the water that comes from industrial plants if this water is not treated it's also another major aspect that causes major major pollution of our water especially chemical by waste that finds itself in water this could have elements like lead it could have mercury it could, mercury <laughs> forgive me it could have mercury it could have stuff like uh, cadmium and all these are very very bad for our bodies they cause cancer they cause a lot of hazards in our bodies and also they're not good because they also affect the biodiversity of our water they also affect the, the the living things that live in water like the fish the plants that grow in water basically they affect the whole food chain that is associated with water another thing that causes major pollution in our water is human activities like someone decides that today i'm going to go and take a swim in the river it's not very good because you're all sweaty, you're all dirty, we don't know where you're from and all that. And clearly, we have swimming pools. Go take a deep inner swimming pool. It's more hygienic. There's people taking showers in rivers. You come with soap and you're taking a bath in there. The soap has chemical aspects and attributes and all these seep into the water. Someone else decides, oh, I'm going to go wash my clothes by the river. So they take their clothes and they go and wash the clothes in the river. They're still polluting the water. There's also the issue of oil seeping, oil spillages in our water. These oil spillages come from maybe ships when ships are moving and there's an oil spillage, maybe the motor boats and all this. This is very, very bad because it covers the water body and it deprives, okay, oil when it spills on water, it forms a layer. And this layer reduces the amount of oxygen getting into the water. And this is a hazard because the fish and the other living the other living organisms in water are deprived of oxygen. The chemical products that come from the industrial waste, they heat up the water and this hence causes a side effect of acid rain. And uh, when you think about something like deforestation, it's also very, very bad because, you know, at the end of the day, deforestation not only affects, uh, deforestation actually takes more than you can imagine because you need water to to bring about rain and if there's no water to bring about rain and if there's no if there are no trees to help bring about rain then there's no even actual water to come back to our river sources you see it's a cycle 
So what are the major issues that come about as a result of water pollution? We know that we've learned the pollutants of water, which are human activities like bathing and cleaning and showering in water. The, uh, using our water bodies as garbage sites where you throw plastics and water bottles. Maybe you're traveling in a cruise and then now you're thinking like, oh, I've had this bucket of crisps, let me just throw the paper in the water. Oh, I've had this bottle of water, let me just throw this. I've had this banana, let me throw it, maybe it might decompose. But these are hazards to our water. And these are water polluting our water. Today, nobody, nobody can seep into any amount of water from our water sources, especially in Kenya. Reason being, our water is polluted. And who is polluting this water? We as human beings are polluting this water. Human activities are the major causes of water hazards. Another really bad and scary aspect of water pollution is that there could also be other things like our mining. Mining can affect underground water because of the mining activities and the tools that are used. This could also affect the underground water. Even though, what do you call this? Um, these hazards, some chemicals sometimes instead of being burnt and all that because they can cause hazards to us like from the air, they're usually buried underground. But over time, these chemicals seep out the, um, the elements into the water sources. And this is what actually happened to Nagasaki and all that. And that's how mercury found itself in fish bodies and then when you consume the fish, it affected the people in that region many, many years ago, but it still happens. So what are the hazards that come about with water pollution? With water pollution, we kill the living organisms in water. We kill the fish, we kill the dolphins, we kill the flamingos, we kill the crabs. All the animals that depend on water end up dying because of us polluting the water. What is another issue that comes about with pollution? We find that the food chain is affected. So you've thrown things that have lead and they have mercury and they have cardium into water. So the small animals will eat this and the small animals will be eaten by the fish. Then the fish will later be consumed by us as human beings. So this affects the human, the food chain because you see everything is being affected because one small mistake by human beings just using water as a dump site is resulting in so many other elements of human, human life indirectly. See, the food chain from the lower levels, the higher level, is affected by pollution of water. As a result of this, we come about to the third issue, which is disease. When our water is polluted, that's why you find that these days the issue of typhoid, cholera, diarrhea, height pylori, all these are not coming to an end. These days, you go to hospital, height pylori is always going to be an issue. And height pylori comes from consuming contaminated vegetables and contaminated water sources. You find that you always have amoeba, you find that you have cholera, you find that you have typhoid, you find that you even get hepatitis because of just our water sources being polluted. Another issue that comes from polluting water is that we destroy our ecosystem. Once we destroy our ecosystem, our, our seasons are affected. When our seasons are affected, there's more drought, there's more farming, there's more diseases, there's everything that affects the human being crumbles. So you see, our carelessness is what is actually causing water pollution. So what can we do? I think first and most basic, let's stop being careless. Let us understand that we are water, 70% of us. We need water. Without water, we will die. We need to preserve our water sources, not for ourselves, for future generations. We found this water here. It's only fair that we take care of this water. And as part of our, part of our BBI with Mother Nature, it's only fair that we take care of Mother of mother nature's water um, a situation that we can relate to about water and its value in Kenya could involve the situation with our um, Mau forest the Mau forest complex the Mau forest complex is um has 22 blocks and has a total population total area cover of 14 417,000 hectares the Mau forest complex is the major water source for people living in the Rift Valley and the people living in the western side of Kenya. At the same time, the Mau Forest forms the largest closed canopy ecosystem, uh, forms the largest closed canopy forest in Kenya. And it's the largest actually, it's the largest closed canopy forest in Kenya. And it's the largest contributor of our Kenyan ecosystem. At the same time, the Mau Forest Complex is the, is, um, the largest 
montane forest in East Africa. You see, this is a very important aspect. Then I guess we now understand why people were being told to leave the Mau forest. But at the same time, it was a little bit a hostile because, you know, the whole issue with Mau forest did not happen overnight. This is um, what actually happened to 15 years. It was um, an issue that resulted in just through a period of 15 years where we lost a quarter of the Mau forest to people settling there, Ill illegal activities like people cutting down trees, people burning coal there, people buying land there, irregular forest acti activities, resources being mishandled. The Mau forest did not crumble overnight. The Mau forest did not become an issue that the scientists had to call the government and say, oh, you have to do something and address this whole Mau forest complex because despite it being very important as a water source, Mau forest is also a very important IBA because it has a large number of bad different bad communities so if Mau forest is affected it's not only going to affect people living in Mau forest it's not going to affect kenya it's not going to just affect east africa it's going to basically affect africa because Mau forest is one of the treasures that africa has for itself so they said i think now we understand that what happened to people being moved from Mau had to happen because Mao forest remain needs to be there needs to sustain a very like half the population of kenya if you think of the people living in the rift valley and the people living living in the western sides of kenya that forms like half the population of kenya and um i have some notes here and according to my understanding the thing is um with the Mao forest the the scientists predicted that Further destruction of the Mao forest would cause environmental disaster in Kenya and significantly reduce river flows and lake levels. Imagine if there are no rivers moving that side. And imagine the way the Rift Valley has many, many lakes. If all these lakes were affected in a way or another, then what could happen to the population of Kenya? Half the population of Kenya, which is like 20 plus million people, would suffer from drought. People would lack water. People would be dying. There would be starvation. And that would be very, very bad. So I think we understand the value of water as an element of Mother Nature. And as we build a bridge between Mother Nature and ourselves, the one thing that we really need to focus on is conserving our environment. Like right? one tree per person to reach our 10% tree cover by having a total of 47 million trees. So this is Alicia and I am still pushing. Now we are forming a BBI. Let this be our festive season project to form a BBI between Mother Nature and ourselves as Kenyan citizens. A BBI between Mother Nature with the rest of the world because you know, this video is not only being watched by Kenyans, it's being watched by people all over the world. Let us focus on saving our water sources. Let us focus on sanitizing our water sources. Let us bring back the beauty blue water reflection that beautiful water let us take away this brown disgusting water you're like oh my god who's going to drink this water is beautiful it's meant to be a clear crystal product let us keep let us keep it clear crystal let us be able to go out and have a sip in the beautiful water let us enjoy the minerals that come from water and let us stop destroying water sources so till next time have a Merry Christmas, have a festive, festive season. And one trip a person is all it takes to bring about the difference we need in our Kenyan ecosystem, in our Kenyan tree cover, in our Kenyan wild. Adios, amigo. Do subscribe, comment, like, and share. Bye-bye.